Hi and good evening and welcome to Tottenham Tantrum Gold, your home of your classic games, classic debates and anything to do with Spurs over its glorious history. Tonight we're doing a special Bill Nickerson tribute show to our great ever manager and joining us tonight, well, this man needs no introduction. Here's our record appearance holder. He's my skipper of my generation, who always will be skipper to me. He was the most successful Tottenham captain. He is one, one hell of a lovely man and a gentleman. It's my pleasure and TTG's pleasure to present Mr. Steve Perriman. Good evening, Steve. How are you? Good evening. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invite again. Yes, yeah, lovely to have you back on. It really is. Pleasure. Pleasure. Well, you're talking about you're talking about the great man, so it would be very amiss of me not to uh, throw my penny worth in yeah. about him. I mean, he he was he he's such a huge figure over the club, isn't he, Steve? He really is. He's such a he is Mr. Yeah. Tottenham, isn't he? Sure. So I'm from West London. Mm -hmm. um, I followed Brentford and QPR. I was aware of the Tottenham double team and their exploits and the uh, first team to win the uh, European trophy and all of that stuff. And um, it coincided with me coming to prominence that they won the cup in 67. And I signed for them after that victory. Um, the reason I signed for Spurs instead of anyone else, and there was about 30 odd clubs um, involved for me because I didn't sign a schoolboy form uh, with the with the advice of my elder brother. Um, but Tottenham were the first to knock on the door and I opted to sign for that club. But the reason was, of course, their history, but the manner and the integrity of Bill Nicholson. Mm. Um, very, very, very special guy. Um, didn't make outlandish promises, told you how hard it was going to be. And his first instruction to me as I walked through the door on the first morning was, Steve, if you play quick, easy and accurate, you'll have a career. And hopefully that's what I did. I don't think that uh, advice would go amiss these days. Yeah. So he was definitely ahead of his time. He... Um, I think if you mention the word game management to him, he would sort of question you, well, what does that mean? Um, in all the years I played for him and knew him, he never once told anyone to run the ball to the corner flag. He never once said, waste time. He never once said, kick that player, that opponent, to put him out the game. He was full of integrity. He, of course he wanted to win but uh, he wanted to win in the right manner. And that is what I'm proud and privileged to have worked under and learned under. And, um, you know, whether I did it or not, I tried to carry that on into my game after Bill Nick had left. And, um, you know, the club just can't forget such a character. Mm -hmm. um, they've got to follow his beliefs and... You know, you can have all that you want about playing between the lines and 3-5-2 or 5-3-2 or whatever you want. As Bill Nick used to say, Steve, it's 11 against 11. Yeah. You, it, you, you, you outrun or outplay or both your opponent. And if we got enough in the team that do that against their opponent, we should win. So very simple instructions. Um, he had a, a framework of how to play, of how they taught you to play. And I was lucky enough to come in at 15, whereas other players come in maybe when they were 25 mm -hmm. in their career. And they only had Bill Nick for, say, three or four years. I had his messages for a longer time. And not always directly from Bill, but from Bill's staff. And I think that they were handpicked. Um, he didn't leave anything to chance. And um, as I say, he gave me an, uh, an integrity of how to play, how to act, how to be with supporters, how to be with, OK, the, the sponsors were not so big in our day. The adverts around the ground weren't such. No adverts in the programme was there. 
Um, but just how to conduct yourself, be it on the field or off the field. And um, but it was all it was all simple. It was very simple instructions, and um, just he was he was he was a very impressive character in terms of following his words. And I met his daughter one day. I met her, of course, in my younger days, but I met her now, you know, probably five years ago. And we both agreed that he was a type of man who you did not want to let down. Uh, be it as his daughter or be it as me as a young player, you did not want to let him down. You wanted to try and please Bill Nicholson. And, um, but it was tough love. There was very, very few well dones. I'm, I'm not, I haven't discussed that with his daughter, but there were very few well dones as far as I was concerned or the young players at the time. We were expected to love the club as much as he did. We were expected to leave it all out on the field at whatever level we were playing at, whether you're in the juniors, the under-17s, or whether you're in the first team playing in a cup final. You, he wanted you to give your all for his beloved Tottenham Hotspur. And I always remember Ralph Coates. He, he, he left us to sort of our own devices on the last game of the season to play against up at Stoke. And Bill Nick went to sign Ralph Coates. And uh, I think he met him on the motorway and signed him in the car. And he said to Ralph, so how does it feel, Ralph, to be a Tottenham Hotspur player? Yeah, yeah, Bill. Yeah, great, great. No. How does it feel? What's happening in here? Ralph said, whatever he answered, he could not have answered strongly enough to Bill Nick think that he was now in love with the club. <laughs> I mean, how's that possible? He just signed. He signed two minutes ago. But it's the start of making you follow him yeah. and um, again no promises that he couldn't carry out he treated everyone with, with respect um, for instance and this doesn't sound respectful but I know how Bill's mind worked we had five teams competed on a Saturday when I was there under 17s, juniors, under 18s, youth team, A team in the Metropolitan League, football combination reserve team, and the first team. Five sets of kit to be packed, sets of boots, coaches to be booked to take us wherever, or some, some were playing at home, obviously. And therefore, on a Monday morning, you reported, and the doctor came in Monday morning and Friday morning. He wasn't full-time, the doctor. He was a full-time doctor, but not for us. And uh, so there would be four beds full of players and then maybe four or five extras standing up waiting to eventually get on the bed and be treated. And Bill Nick would walk in immaculate, um, creases down his trousers, his, his hairline parting, absolutely immaculate. Shoes polished. And there's four beds, remember. And he'd walk in and he'd stop and he'd just look to the next bed, to the next bed, to the next bed. Sigh and walk out. What he's actually saying is there that without saying it, I've got to go and deal with the players that are going to get me the next result. <laughs> And it's probably none of you because you're injured. You know, the modern, the modern day would say, how are you? How's the ankle? Is it coming down any? Is it getting any easier? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That cut over your eye, the stitches of, the, look like they're mending. They'll be all right in, in a couple of days, et cetera. No, you were injured. You were no good to him. So, so uh, do you know what? I think players got fitter quicker on the strength of, not having that extra care. It was tough love. It was tough love. And when you think about the era that Eddie Bailey and Bill Nicholson came through 
and therefore their staff, Jack Coxford, Johnny Wallace, uh, Cecil Poynton, um, Sid Tickeridge in my younger days, Pat Welton. Um, when you think what they'd come through in their lives, be it the end of the war or during the war and rationing and no central heating in the houses, etc., it was a get on with it society. And that's how you were treated as a player. Just mm. get on with it. He gave you all the tools you needed. He gave you the great pitch at Chesant. And okay, the training pitches could get a bit wet during the winter, but he, he gave you all the tools you needed and he gave you the information you needed. And then, you know what? It was down to you. And if he liked you, he kept picking you. If he didn't, you were moved on. And, um, I'm proud to say that I, you know, there's a cut, there's a cull at the end of every season. And I'm proud to, enough to say that I survived every cut or cull at the end of the season to carry on for another year. And one of Bill Nick Sands was, and, and he was not money motivated in any shape or form. He, he said to me one day, Steve, don't worry about money. Just keep doing it right. If you do it right, the money comes. And I think that's how he lived his life, really. He, if he worked hard enough and was successful enough and got enough good players around him, trying to do the same thing in terms of playing together, doesn't matter whether he was Jimmy Greaves or Pat Jennings, uh, if you play together, 11 together equals 12. And 11 not together probably equal 10. So all of a sudden... It's 12 versus 10. You've got every chance of winning. So um, proper man, proper ethics. Uh, very proud to have been under his stewardship. And, um, yeah, I like, to, I like to talk on mediums such as yours to let people know and not forget the special character of this man. And... Um, the number of times he told us we didn't deserve to win that, particularly trophies, you, you didn't. Wolves were better than you. Yeah. No, we weren't good enough. And you know what he's doing? He's, he, he's kept, he keeps pushing the boundaries of, you've got to be better. Got to be better. Got to be better. And even when his double team were called super or elite or some, some word, he said, don't call them that. Don't call them that. That sounds like they're finished. They're done. They're at the top of their tree. Finished top of the league, but there's still a bit to go. And I think that's a sign of a very, very good manager. It, it is. I mean, Steve, I mean, that that's just giving me goosebumps. Just listening to that, it really has. Um, just very quickly, I loved... Sorry, I forgot to introduce my co-host, Ben. Sorry. His, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay, Steve. That we were all just transfixed by that. We really were. It was just that's the way to open the show. I mean, Bill Nick means so much to me as it does to Ben and especially Arthur. He means so much to all of us, all of us as fans. And we would give our right leg to have your position to play under the great man. Yeah. Because I, he, he really is for me, Mr. Tottenham. He he built a house. That made us proud to be Spurs fans. Yeah. When you look at that stadium, for instance, mm. I, I call that a working class palace. It wasn't luxurious. It wasn't, you know, tiled of the highest quality. You weren't, you know, in comfort, but you were there to work. Mm. And the crowd came in. And to be fair, I don't think they were charged top, top prices of the era, not for the program or the, or the seat, but they were there to watch their players go to work. And that's what they expected. And that's what Bill Nicholson expected. And, um, yeah, just a proper, proper, proper gentleman that when you played well for Bill Nicholson, you felt you felt better than playing well for anyone else. Yeah. Because you were repaying his faith in you. This great man, this great manager was paying you the compliment of picking you 
and put, giving you the chance to wear that famous white shirt. And um, there's a saying, those who drink the water, remember those that dug the well. So however much you've got a great stadium, great training ground, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's the people like Bill Nicholson and Arthur Rowe and the Eddie Baileys of the world. Let's not forget them. The Johnny Wallaces, all those people I named before. I weren't aware of the staff before that, so I can't name them. But, but um, you know, that club has been built on very, very strong foundations when you're dealing with characters like that. Yeah, it, it is. We, we've got a question for you here, Steve. Um, it's from Bob Spur, who's who who runs his own channel. Um, but for the past few months, he hasn't been very well with COVID. He's been battling COVID, okay. and he he's on his way back. Bless him. Um, Good. And he, do you know? For Bob Spur, would love to know how would Bill fare in today's game? Very difficult question. That um, Bill Nicholson would have struggled with agents. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine someone telling Bill Nicholson how good their player is? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you how good he is. Or not. He might be able to do this, but he can't do that. So, so that element, uh, Bill Nick would struggle with. But of course, we all have to adapt. I struggle with it. You know, when I have to when I have to start dealing with agents and they're telling me they want, you know, you're signing a centre forward yeah. and they want a goal bonus. Well, you're gonna give us the money back if you don't score. That's what he's signed for. So there's a there's a sort of old fashioned I, I've picked that up from Bill Nick as such. As an old-fashioned way of looking at all this, don't get above yourself. Do not get above yourself. Just play the game. Yeah. Play the game. Don't you? No need to do this. Or, or can you imagine him? Can you imagine him dealing with a player that's got a million pounds worth of cars sat on their driveway? Wow. Could he have adapted to that? I don't think he'd have wanted to. I think he, um, I think he saw everyone at their level, and he just couldn't deal with people or players getting above themselves. So, um, I mean, he did everything, everything. I learned more about how he, how he liked me as a player from other people than I did from Bill. Mm -hmm. He would tell very openly other people that he liked my effort, he liked my willingness to run, my willingness to recover to goal, my willingness to put my foot into the tackle, etc. And now and again he scores a goal, but not very often. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he'd tell that to other people. He wouldn't tell it to me. He would tell you the faults. Mm. Steve, come on, you got, you got, you got more shots. You. Come on, you, you, Steve, Steve, you can tackle the ball to your teammate. So he's not just worried about you winning the ball in a tackle. He wants you to win the ball and force it to your teammate who's three or four yards away. <laughs> when when we took, talk a lot about anticipation, it was particularly a word that Bill wanted to use and, and believed in. And I've never heard anyone say the word the way that Bill Nick said it. Steve, anticipation, son. <laughs> it was full of meaning. Steve, yeah, you got better anticipation. Bill Nick meant it when he said it. He meant the messages. He meant the halftime talk. He meant the, if we'd have gone a few games, you know, not winning. He, he meant the bit of a crisis situation. He meant it. 
And you know as a player, when your manager talking means what he's saying. And you know when a manager's fluffy. Yeah. He's saying it. But he don't, he's not really convinced himself. And therefore, how can he convince you if he's not convinced himself? Yeah, that that's so true. Arthur, you, you've been a Spurs fan for God knows how long. Then you saw Steve make his debut as a 17-year-old. Um, for you as a fan, what was it like to, to watch Bill Nick's teams play when you stood on the East Stand or the, the old West Stand or the old East Stand or the shelf? What was it like to watch the team of the early 60s and then the 70s? It, it's a feeling that's very difficult to describe because we were honoured. You know, there were these guys like Steve who came out on the pitch, rolled their sleeves up. They got stuck in. They did. They did. What I or I'm known for being straightforward and blunt myself, and that's exactly what I always felt about Tottenham. They were straightforward. They knew what they were doing. They had skill. They had guts. And they had a lot, a lot of power. You know, they could defend. They could play, as Steve was a midfielder, um, and a great midfielder. When we first saw Steve, you know, he came on to play, and we thought, oh, what's Steve Perryman on today? Who's this? What's going on here? Yeah. Who is this guy? Who is this? <laughs> but I tell you what, he came in at 17, he held his spot, and he, he, he never let it go. And he was one of our best captains ever. And every time we saw his name on there, we said, Sign up the midfield. If anyone can win a ball, Steve can. And, you know, OK, he had great players around him as well, but I think it's fair to say, even to Steve's face now, is that the older players, the senior players, the ones that everybody raves about because their skill and their scoring ability, they respected Steve. He gained their respect, as did the fans. Bill, Bill, Bill Nicholson. Um, fantastic. Made, it's, Bill, it's something you can't explain, you know, Bill, to watch the sides that we watched. Bill Nicholson, when he made me vice captain, yeah, I think uh, Martin Peters was injured. I think it was against Lynn Oslo in the UEFA <laughs> Cup. So he didn't, he didn't want to go all through this decision every time. So he says, Steve, so not only are you a captain tonight because Martin's injured, but that means you're vice captain. So whenever he's injured, you're going to be captain. He said, play the game tonight. Come and see me tomorrow. He gave me a sheet of paper with about 20 things to think about as a captain. <laughs> I wish to Christ that I'd have kept that. I'm not saying I've forgotten it. I'm, I probably did most of them. But just to have that piece of paper. So... If Bill Nicholson wrote out that piece of paper, that was considered. That was from his heart. That was from his head. Yeah. And that, and that was from his soul. How you lead a team. You can't just put the, you know, your captain toss the coin. No. It means more than that. And actually, you're captain of Tottenham Hotspur. That's an even bigger accolade. Yeah. So, so he, he um, they, they, I played for England youth one day and I got, I think it was at Luton against Era, Southern Ireland. And um, uh, Telegram, quite a few telegrams from different people, but this telegram said, wear the white shirt of England as pr proudly as you do the white shirt of Tottenham. Yeah. Yes. So he could just pull out, he could sort of link the two together. In a way, he's saying, you know, your club is as good as your country, actually. But I'll let, I let him have you this tonight. <laughs> but he, he put everything in, in um, perspective. He had total respect for the crowd. I think that's what the crowd knew about Bill Nicholson. He had total respect for the crowd. And one day he said to us, um, right, who's the most important people at this club? And no one answered because they thought it was a trick question. <laughs> and he said, the supporters. Yeah. You'll go. I'll go. They don't change their club. They're the most important people at this club. Not you. Not me. 
them, the supporters. So, uh, yeah, he, he had to, uh, I, I took on board that if you were picked to wear that white shirt, you were representing those people. Okay, I, I related more to the people on the terraces than, than the seats because they were closer. Um, but you were carrying the baton for them. And I think my appeal to them was, for instance, as much as they adored Glenn Oddle, rightly so, absolutely rightly so. What a talent. They couldn't see their self be able to do what Glenn did. You know, that 60-yard ball on, on a tanner over the fella's head, make him jump, and then he realises he ain't got it, and that allows Tony Galvin to get away a bit, bit further. Um, but I think they could see themselves being me if they had the chance. Well, I'd run about. I'd, I'd get put my foot in. I'd recover the goal if I lost the ball. And um, so Bill Nick, Bill Nick treated you all the same. I was treated as well as Jimmy Greaves from day one. I've got to tell you that from day one. And that weren't with presence. That weren't with – that was Bill Nick saying – Steve, you okay? Yes, Bill. Good, good. Keep going. And not a well done, but just a just a little lift when you need it, you know. And Eddie Bailey was a. I always tell this story, right? I pl I got it through the youth team into the A team. Of course, for certain games you had to keep going backwards and play in the FA Youth Cup and all that. But I'd never played in the reserves yet. And I played this night game in the Metropolitan League at Chesham. And we walked off in the corner, and it would have been about sort of 6.30 at night, I suppose, the finish of the game. No floodlights there. And Eddie Bailey stood, stood on the bank. And as we're walking off into the corner, he said, Perryman, come here. Walk over. He said, someone tells me that there's a list up in that dressing room of a, the possible players that may go on the end of season tour to America and Canada. And apparently, I don't believe it, but apparently your name is on that list. How did your name get on that list? <laughs> I, I don't know, Bill. I, I, uh, Eddie, I, I, I don't know. Did you write it on that list? No, no. <laughs> now, in the modern day talk, that would be, Steve, you've had a good season. The manager likes you. He wants to have a look at you in the first team situation, only on a tour, but there'll be situations come up in hotels and, and in the <laughs> games. So he wants to judge you in a different situation than what you've been judged so far. But well done, you've, you're, you're, you're looking like it. They just couldn't say it. They couldn't say, well done. They couldn't say it. It wasn't in their vocabulary to say it. And it, all of this was to sort of keep you down. Now, these days, when you talk about what Bill Nick had done, the agents are talking them up. The dads are talking them up. The television are talking them up. Ever before, they're right to be spoken up. Bill Nick couldn't have controlled that. He did in his day. He controlled it. Of course, he had the, the contract situation to control it as well. Freedom of contract meant the clubs were too strong. But now the players are too strong. So uh, there must be a good in between somewhere. But um, Bill Nick, in terms of his football ability, would have been as good as anything you've seen today. Because he cared. And he thought it through and he worked on it. Bill Nick's the only one ever in my life who taught me how to tackle. No one. They will talk about tackling. No one teaches it. Nobody teaches it. Trust me. Nobody talks about leadership. Well, they talk about it, but they cannot, they cannot draw it up from within to pass on that knowledge to you. The whole world of football are lacking leaders. Why? Because no one can teach it. 
I could teach it because Bill Nick taught me. But for whatever reason, it's not needed or not asked for or not recognised. But that's another story. But anyway, so um, I worry about a goalkeeper being the captain. I don't quite see that. I no. worry about a centre forward being the captain. I don't quite see that. You've got to have someone in the middle, in the close yeah. to the action. Uh, okay, he's got to be the right character. He's got to be team orientated, and all of this. I'm going down a road that I shouldn't be going down. But anyway, Bill Nick led me to lead. Yeah, and that ga that gave me a career. Bill Nicholson would be harsh on you if you got the ball in a tight area. You managed to work yourself out of it, and now the winger, there's a winger there. And because you've just done the difficult thing, some players go to the winger and they take their head off the ball as they give it. And it, it's about a yard too backward of the player instead of being two yards in front of him. Bill Nick could take your head off for that, just for that bit of difference of it being right or not. He wanted it right as many times as you could get it right. And do you know what? If you didn't do it right, you then had to show a good reaction to then make up for it. It's not a lot to ask for a manager, is it? No, it's, it really isn't, Steve. I mean, I, I wrote down a list of questions and you've just answered all of them. <laughs> so I've got, I've got one question. <laughs> you've got I've one done, question. I've, I've got one before, here for you. you. Know. Huh? I've done this before. <laughs> I think you have, Steve. Um, I, I I would love to know how did Bill how did Bill Nicholson I I have to call him Mister Nicholson because that's who he was to all the fans. How did he tell you about your debut for the club when you were seventeen? Did he tell you or was it how how did that day come about? I travelled with the first team to Derby mm. as thirteenth man. It was eleven plus one sub. That was the first time Spurs had played against Dave Mackay, having released him. Mm -hmm. Dave Mackay's derby beat us 5-0. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the best 13th man I could have ever have chosen. Because <laughs> I'm witnessing Tottenham being taken apart. And I'm in the dressing room at the end when Bill Nicholson is telling the team that just got beat 5-0 what they did wrong. And that gave me my chance next the next Saturday. And uh, the team was full of good players, but did not have enough legs. So I was brought in as the legs. And um, I, I, I describe it as there was too many Chiefs and not enough Indians. I was brought in as an Indian. And um, so he, he brought... I, I travelled with the reserves on either the Tuesday or Wednesday night, midweek game at Reading, and I wasn't picked in the team. And do you know what? I was hurt. <laughs> anyway, um, the reason was because they were thinking of playing me on the Saturday, so they didn't want to play me and maybe I got injured or something. And um, on the Friday, he called me and Dennis Bond into the office and said, one of you will be playing tomorrow, but maybe both of you. So I went home thinking, well, Dennis is playing. Okay. So it was not to give me too much pressure, too much stress. But he knew, I've spoke to him since, he knew that I was going to be playing uh, against Sunderland. And um, it was all very normal. It was... Steve, go and play. You've got your chance because you work hard, you run, you tackle, you can pass. You're not gonna you're not gonna dribble anyone. That's not your game. But if you just keep, I've told you before, Steve, keep it, play quick, easy, and accurate. And that's what that's what you've done so far, and that's what we need to keep doing. And just Bill Nicholson has picked you in the team. Wow. How about having that as a feather in your cap? Yeah. Um, so. I mean, we can only dream about that. The three of us can only dream about that. Yeah. Um, 
how 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 did you feel when Bill left? Um, he left after um, after I think it was a four nil defeat to Middlesbrough. I think he had a tough start to that season. And yeah. what I, what was what was Bill like? Did did he come disillusioned with the game, or was it just he just did he just have enough I when he left? Thought, I personally thought it was getting too much for him. Mm. I think. Um, However bright your flame shines, there's a point where it's it's starting to flicker. Mm-hmm. And not that I was any great judge of that, because I've only ever played under one manager, and I wouldn't. But something said to me, Bill's struggling. And the meetings were getting longer and longer and longer. And he was trying to do everything to sort of turn it around. Um but I thought it was looking tired. I thought it was looking, um, it was looking as disappointed as a perfectionist that he was when it's not going right. And mm. um, so I, I personally thought it was the right time for him. I don't think anything suggests that actually it was the wrong time for him. Um, mm. whether, whether he should have stayed on at the club is another matter, you know, just because you're, you're, you're sort of coming off the peak of your career, this great man with great trophies, you know, of course there's going to be an up and there's going to be a bit of a down. You can't keep going up forever. So, um, for Tottenham to have lost Bill Nick's way was ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Didn't he have a rough time? Wasn't he fighting with Martin Chivers, etc.? For a lot of politics. Um, politics, sort of egos more than politics. Yes. Yeah, and um, and players started to. Do you remember '66 World Cup? Then there's a '70 World Cup. Yeah. All of all of the '70s team got given a. Uh, Ford motor car white you know the age of players getting extra from outside started to happen and if you started to concentrate too much on the outside it meant you were detracting from what you was doing so I think that was a a big problem for for Bill and um, so he he that's probably why he could not have coped these days. Yeah. On the pitch, on the training pitch, yes. The the lot of nonsense that goes on be, beyond it, he would have struggled with. And um, I keep coming back to the same thing. Bill Nick was honest. And some of what happens surrounding the game these days is not honest. Um, yeah. I, I'm very critical of... Um, of pundits on television. Um, I think some of those pundits, if they weren't being paid, would not even go to a game. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I don't think they love the game. And they all link on to the same words, like between the lines and game management and all this bullshit yeah. that... that um, would have drove Bill Nicholson mad like it drives me mad. And um, so he was passionate about the game going forward, moving forward. Mm. I don't think he would have liked the goalkeeper keep passing the ball to, to the back players in the box and and the square passes. I don't think he would have liked that too much. But um, get it forward, get it forward, support it, and then we play from there. That's That's how we played. And um, you can't say that he wasn't a, 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 an attacking manager. He was. Mm. He would take you on. No, no, no problem. And uh, I, I never, I never was asked to, that we're going to defend today. Just defend and break. No, no, not a chance. He cared too much about the furtherment of the game. And um, as much as Premier League would tell you how much the gates have improved and all this nonsense. Um, is the game any better? I don't think so. 
It's still the same, isn't it? Still, it's still eleven against eleven, and a white ball in the middle of the in the middle 11, of the pitch. Eleven v eleven. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, I mean, Bill, Keith Birkinshaw brilliantly brought Bill Nick back as a consultant. Yep. Um, then he found the players like Graham Roberts, um, great players of the eighties, of the late seventies, eighties. Do you think probably, Keith probably probably scouts? See these players, yeah, and then Bill Nick gives the final yes on it, yeah. So Graham Roberts, Tony Galvin, for instance, um, Ali Dick, Keith had a lot to do with that one. Um, so when you think about the team that won the '84 UEFA Cup with a lot of so-called top players not playing, you know, it was a victory for homegrown talent really and mm. I always regard Robertson and Galvin as homegrown I, I, I do I'm always telling them to even today that you knew fuck all when you come to us <laughs> so you've only you've only learned it while you've been here and uh, they sometimes kick up against that but anyway so they know it's a sort of a joke but I, mm. I still regard them as homegrown players so when you look at that team you know don't tell me Bill Nick's name was not written in there somewhere. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Be it with me, obviously, because he signed me. And I'm the captain, not on the day, but I, I was the captain of that team. But, you know, he took his wife to to watch Tony Galvin, didn't he? Um, on their anniversary. <laughs> in the pouring rain. And ev everyone thought the game was going to be off. And he kept going and kept going and kept going. And Tony Galvin said to me the other day, I think he only stayed for about an hour. But he said he saw enough. So he yeah. paid respect to his wife's anniversary that they could get home half hours <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I think he was brave taking her to the football in the first place. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then again, Bill Nick turned down Alan Hansen, for instance, up in Scotland. Really? And and yeah, and but Alan Hansen played in midfield, and he said he's he's this is he's not our type of midfield player. And you know, I don't, I don't think he played too many times for Liverpool in midfield. No, of course he did at the back. But um, so, yeah, you know, a successful team is not all about one man. Of course, the double team we think of Bill Nicholson and the first European Trophy, Bill Nicholson. But there's a lot of people behind it all, and Bill Nick was one of the people behind Keith and the eighties mm. success. So. Um, you, you you imagine you Keith Birkinshaw and you got relegated and you kept the job, which is a miracle. Um, and then you know you bring Bill Nick in, who who you're going to travel away to to Braga or somewhere, and Bill Nick would be looking over you saying, "Where are you going to train? What what are you going to do with them eight hours that are, the players are just kicking their heels?" What, Bill, Bill Nick had a, had, a, had a way of dealing with a team in all those moments. And uh, I'm not saying Keith was a fool. He absolutely weren't. But as many good people around you as you can get helps you become a very good manager. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, for me personally, I think the 80s side was as much to do with Keith and Bill, Nick, as the 60s and 70s side. Because I think Keith... It was genius bringing Bill Nick back because Bill Nick had all this experience that Keith could tap into. Yeah. A bit like Matt, Matt Busby up in, up in yeah. Manchester United with Sir Alex Ferguson. And very Did... similar characters. Very mm. similar characters. Both Yorkshiremen. Both, both didn't throw money around. No. <laughs> and, um, and they wanted... If they spent a pound note, they wanted 150 back for it. <laughs> in effort, in effort, and yeah. and create whatever, whatever they're judging you on. They say say the money spent on bills spent on Jimmy Greaves. He thought he was worth more than that. That's why he paid it. Pat Jennings, Cyril Knowles, Mike Kingdom was a top top buy, wasn't he of the day? Alan yeah. Gilzean. You know, you can't get these people in and then not be good at what you do because they'll laugh you out of court. 
Yeah. And the respect for Bill Nicholson was undoubted. And then, and then I used to sometimes go into Bill Nick's office. Maybe he wanted to, I remember going in there one day, Steve, stand up, stand up. And he'd go to a cupboard and he'd get out these balls. You remember like when we, there's snow, we'd play an mm. orange ball. Well, to say the three orange balls would be kept in that cupboard. And over the course of time, while they're not being used, they'd go down. <laughs> and I've, I've been standing up tackling Bill Nicholson with one of these orange balls <laughs> on the carpet of his office floor. And the, <laughs> the air's coming out of the, out of the ball <laughs> where we're meeting it at the same time, you know. And um, it just... It just oozed. Um, some people can learn from what they're doing. I, I say this to Mickey Hazard all the time. Mickey Hazard has now become very intelligent about football. When Mickey Hazard was a player, every game was new game. He carried nothing from the game before into the next game. I did that well. I didn't do that so well. I'll do more of that, less of that. It's obviously how you get to your pinnacle of your career. Mickey was so talented, so talented, he could play every game off the back of, it's another day. It's another game. Who are we playing today? Sometimes he wouldn't know who we were playing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Bill yeah. Nicholson was my type that he learned from everything he did. Mm. I'll do more of that. I'll do less of that. And, and therefore, when this type of man is teaching you about the game, he's telling you off his, of his own experiences. Sometimes you've got to let the players just do what they do, like Jimmy Greaves. Bill Nick would never tell Jimmy Greaves how to score a goal. <laughs> Keith Birkinshaw would never tell Glenn out a 60 yard ball over that fullback's head make him tempt him to jump and the minute he jumps thinks no I'm not getting it <laughs> so but you still got to give the team the pattern of how to play how to play together mm. 11 together equals 12 and it's not 11 Pat Jennings in the team. It's not 11 Jimmy Greaves. It's a bit of that, a bit of that. You've got to have enough height. You've got to have enough pace. You've got enough cunning. You've got enough that. We played Chelsea four games. Showed none of that. None of it. If any of our players went near Rudiger, I'd have, get, I'd have stand up and applauded them. No one wanted to get near him. Yeah, Ben, um, you're very quiet. <laughs> Do you want to go through some of these um start questions we've started for for, for Steve? Yes, and uh, um, and let you go through. If that's sorry. okay, Steve. If you yeah, still if you don't got mind, time. can we can we leave it to two, and then I've got to go. Yeah, right. that's all right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that's fine. Thanks. And thank you again, Steve, for your My time. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. So I'm going to ask this question from our friend, lovely friend Ellie. And she says, what do you think Mr. Nicholson would have thought of Mr. Conte in terms of the way he runs his ship? Hi, Ellie. Um, I, I personally don't know how he runs his ship. Um, it's a modern day job being first team coach now or whatever you call him. Um, the influence of the chairman and stuff like that. Um, Bill Nicholson was like Keith Birkinshaw. They run it from top to bottom. So if Conte is running it from top to bottom, he'd applaud it. If he thought that Conte was just a sort of puppet for someone else making all the major decisions, and yet he's having to sort of take the flak at the end of games in interviews, I don't think he'd be very impressed. So um, I think he'd like his passion. Uh, 
changing game, I know. Different era. But I don't know that he would have appreciated the the obvious showing the signs of passion. Um, I had someone say to me one day, manager of uh, Watford, we played South End, and I got a letter on the Monday morning saying, well, it's obvious now, I can see that uh, Barry Fry has got more passion than you. So I phoned this chap up because he very kindly left his number and said, said, describe passion. He said, running up and down the touchline, shouting and screaming, and, and you, you, you don't do that. When I'm shouting and screaming, I can't think straight. And if you think there's a ball between me and Barry Fry, who do you think would win it? So there's different ways of showing your passion, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So I think he would pay respect to the man being successful and having done what he did. Um, so um, he, he would know that everyone's got a different style. Bill Nicholson would never be Brian Clough, and Brian Clough could never be Bill Nicholson. But they were both rated as successful managers. Um, and there's different ways to, to do it. And... Uh, I think he would worry about. Um, I think he'd worry about the two fullbacks or the two wingbacks. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but that, but that's not about Conte. That's about modern players. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Actually, one I've never considered. What would Bill Nick? Bill Nick would know that the manager of the club deserves the ultimate respect of the players to go and do what he thinks is best. And if it's best to sell Deli Alley or, or part and move him on, then the manager has to be listened to. If you don't listen to the manager, get rid of the manager. That's how I think Bill Nick would want things. Mm. And um, yeah, but good question, Ellie. Sorry, I've not got a great answer for you, but. But uh, he'd like the training pitches. He'd like the match pitch. Um, I don't think he'd liked heated seats on the subs bench. <laughs> Not that Mr. Conte uses his seat. No, 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 <laughs> no. But um, yeah, I think there's. I think he would feel there's a bit too much pampering going on. Yeah. There are two questions that are very similar to each other, but I'm going to bring one from this distinguished gentleman below me, his lovely daughter, who I met today for the first time. He says, are there any days, later day Spurs players you would love to have played alongside? Uh, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, and that's no, not disrespecting forwards that I played with. Yeah. Um, uh, but Harry is very, very special. Mm. And, of course, latterly, it's all been a bit stuttered and staggered because of events. Um, but the... The quality that he puts the ball in the net with is something to behold. It's not a Jimmy Greaves. It's not a Gilly in the air. It's a bit of that, but also a bit of that and a large slice of that. But overall, it's a confidence that he can score. And um, scores different goals, but... but uh, it's very different for me to see a centre forward keep coming back and then delivering. Yeah, amazing. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's different. So, um, you know, Gilly played on the top line. Chivers played on the top line. Greavesy was on the top line. Um, but different eras, different eras. What about if teams had pushed up more? Well, if they'd have pushed up, Greavesy would have been in. <laughs> Would have been slippery like an eel and got through and, and whatever. But 
um, Chiv, Chiv in the two years where he was the best centre forward in Europe would have outrun the back line. Um, Gilly, not so much. Gilly was a sort of a flicker on her and, and finisher, uh, one touch finisher, if you see what I mean. Um, you weren't going to beat three players and then finish it, Gilly. But, um, but yeah, Harry Kane. Um, I, I like watching Son when he's, when he's on fire. Um, the, the special goal that he scored against Burnley yeah. in, a year back. Um, very exceptional, exceptional goal. And his decision to keep running at the middle of two players. Because when you do that, both the players think, is it me? Is it, is it him? <laughs> and by the time they've had that decision, he's gone through it. Now he looks for the next two players to go at the middle of. And he poses the same question to them. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, can't, I, I can't put any goalkeeper in front of Pat and Clem. I can't put... Um, it'd be easier to answer about the players before me than after me, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. oh, no, they're, they're, that's a brilliant answer, Steve. Um, Pleasure. Uh, I think you've just made two lovely ladies of the, of, of the Spurs community very, very happy people tonight, Steve. Oh, so thank you so much for, bless you. for doing thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to go now, but thank yeah, you. Yeah, I just Steve. one quick thing. Can you do for me, Steve? Yeah. Um, would you please wish Bob Spur a uh, speedy recovery? Because I know it would mean a lot to him if, if you would do that for us. Bob, I have someone in my phone. I've called Bob Spur. It's obviously not you because of yeah. what you've <laughs> gone through, and I would have known it if it had been my friend. Um, so I feel like I'm talking to someone that I know, and I obviously don't. But um, get well soon. Do whatever they're telling you to do, doctors. Um, but keep safe. Um, get fit for your loved ones. Because as, as much as it hurts you, I'm sure, then it's hurting them as well to see you're not at full full capacity, full pace. So uh, look after yourself and um, keep supporting them Spurs. Hopefully they're not making you feel any worse. Um, I think... Um, uh, what's his name? The chap who's just written the book for with Jimmy Greaves for Jimmy Greaves. Norman Giller. Norman Giller. Norman Giller. I, I read after one performance said, "Thank you for making an old man feel a bit older." <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a bit. What's it? But anyway, so um, yeah. All I want to say to you people listening is thank you very much for your support for the mighty Spurs. Thank you for your loyalty. And um, it'll all be worthwhile. Trust me. I don't know whether it's going to be a, a year's time, whether Conte is going to get us to the cup final this year and win it or somewhere down the line. But um, when it comes, it will be so much sweeter. The fact what you've had to go through for the last few years. Yeah. Um, Poch, Poch got us within a step of winning the European... OK, I always call it the European Cup. Um, Champions and, League. And then, yeah, Champions League. But, but it'll always be the European Cup for me. But, um, yeah, I I don't know if Poch is coming back one day or what. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a club that we all love and we want to progress and do better. And um, it can only do that if you stay loyal and and keep keep going. As long as you don't think the club are taking the mick out of you with stuff. But uh, if you do, then you'd have to do the other thing. But stay loyal and keep with it. Well, Steve, thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure. And giving us your time. God bless you. God bless your family as well. And Come on, we hope Spurs. Come yeah, on, come on, guys, and we'll see you soon, Steve. Nice to meet your troops. Bye bye. Bye, Steve. Bye, Thank bye. you. Very much. Bye bye. Bye now. Wow. Well, that was the great Steve Perriman. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I hope everyone. We're sorry we couldn't get to all the comments, but with Steve, he, he did. We didn't have him for very long, so this is now. 
um, do. Right, we're going to get to the second part of the show now. Um, this, is when everything, this is when everything hits the fan. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, do you want to go through some of the comments um, there, Ben? Shall we get through yeah, some of them? Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's another... Uh, so. Eddie saying, Bobby, Stevie loves, uh, uh, Stevie loves you as well, man. Yes, he yes. does. He loves everyone, I think. Uh, Carl Simpson saying, thank you, Stevie, so much. Always the captain, yep. Kim saying, are you getting this, Bobby? And he totally did. Uh, Aaron Dubb is saying, Bob Spur, we love you, Steve. Come on, you Spurs from Aaron. Thanks, our captain. Come on, you Spurs from Kim again. Come on, you mighty Spurs. Much love, Stevie P. I was the European Cup to me too from LA. Uh, come on, you Spurs. Tottenham till I die. Absolutely. Aaron Dubb is saying, wow, exactly what I just said out loud. Um, I, as I fist pumped the air when he said, come on, you Spurs. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to do it. Gents, it was amazing. Thank you so much. And Eddie. We haven't finished yet, by the way. We've still got a bit more of the show to go, but yeah, the second still, part. Yeah, this is the. I might actually have a word in Edgeways. But yeah, I, I, I do apologise, Ben. I'm very I don't sorry. care. I, I had a great time, but I, I get to rest my voice and work at the same time. Now it becomes the Arthur show. Now Arthur yeah. becomes centre stage. Now, as we actually, we, as we're now going to go through the stats and the times of the great Bill Nicholson, and Arthur will be able to give us his his remembrance of the Bill, great Bill Nicholson sides over the over the years when he was manager. Um. Firstly, to you, Ben, then I come to you, Arthur. Ben, what does Bill Nick mean to you as a young Spurs fan? It's a standard, the way it should be. Uh, respect, mm. uh, loyalty, hard work. But most importantly, as Steve, uh, Mr. Perryman, laid out over his hour, honesty. There's mm. no honesty at this football club anymore. No. Everything's backhanded. Nothing is transparent. Everything is, what does he mean? We, we, we are always looking between the lines for a little inkling of anything. There is no honesty at this football club anymore. And it's deeply upsetting. Mm. There's no honesty. But that's what, as Mr. Perryman said before, Bill Nick told you what he thought of you to your face. Mm. And he never told you anything that he didn't mean. He never lied to you. He didn't hurt you for no reason. He told you exactly what he meant and he was honest about it. And it's that is what Bill Nicholson is. Honesty. Uh, truth. Looking out for the little man. Looking out for the working class. As Mr Perryman says, as he learned from Bill Nick, the working class palace yeah. of White Art Lane. We need to bring this back of being of honesty and again working hard and earning your living because these players don't earn a living anymore no certainly bloody well don't and so needs to bring that back that's what bill nicholson means at least to myself uh, and you arthur what what does bill Nick mean to you i mean you you saw the super spurs you saw the great 70s side and going through that hard times in the late 70s and then the revival. What does Bill Nick mean to you? In football terms, everything. Mm. He brought pride into the club. He brought honesty into the club. Steve being a prime example. Mm. And he made players play his type of football, which, of course, was the fans' type of football. Um, I, it's hard to describe, but when you were on the terraces back then, he he stuck a DNA into the team, which mm. was the Bill Nicholson DNA, carried on from Arthur Rowe, but Bill Nick really forged it into something super, and we became Super Spurs. Mm. You heard, you've heard them say that before. That was only under Bill Nick they became Super Spurs, and. They were a phenomenal side. I quote the game, which really set the whole thing going. We were playing in Europe. We went away to the Polish side, Gornik, and we lost 2-4 mm. or 4-2. We brought them back to White Hart Lane and smashed them 8-1. <laughs> right? 
Then we played Eusebio's side, Benfica. There were over 25,000 locked out of that game because the ground was heaving. There was over 76,000 inside. Jesus. So that's I, I got locked out. I didn't see that game against Benfica. Oh, uh, but I, I bet you were sick, weren't you? I, well, I wasn't a happy bunny. <laughs> but I can tell you, when you see that and, 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 and the feeling that that's everybody has, you know, it's, it was electric. Mm. But Bill Nickerson brought this to the club. He forged Spurs into what they now represent. Unfortunately, recently, the DNA has been almost destroyed. Yeah. We need to rebuild that. We need to get a grip of things. And we need to, as Steve said, take a view of it, perhaps through Bill Nickerson's eyes. What should you do to make a successful side? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, you know, we're in modern times. Mm. But money really has ruined the game because there's so much of it flying around. But you can still forge a DNA like Bill Nick did and mm. turn us into a great club once more. And that's what's missing. Yeah. I'll rest my case. Well, um, well, Aaron Dub here says um, says you were outside causing a riot, apparently, Arthur. So I don't, I don't know if we if that's true or not, but <laughs> allegedly, I owe you one, Alan. <laughs> oh no! And then, De and then Derek says, "I saw that game, Arthur. We was ro we were yeah. robbed. We yeah. were absolutely robbed. And I think we would have beaten Real Madrid in that final. Oh yeah. Oh, we would. We would. Yeah. We were, uh, in my opinion, probably the best side, in you, not just in the UK, in Europe. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, these things happen, and they should be shaping the club and the team and, uh, for the future. But, mm. unfortunately, the money men have got into the game, and uh, we've gone backwards instead of forwards, in my opinion. Yeah, we have. Um, um, ben... I mean, we heard the great Steve Perriman talking about Bill Nick and how he'd done. I've always said the club have lost his soul. Do, do you think that's the case? We've lost the soul of Bill Nick and that team and that club. In the words of the great Keith Birkinshaw, there used to be a football club over there. Mm. Well said, that man. Okay. Yeah. End of. We seem to be the only football club in, in Europe or in the world even, that football is the least important part of the football club. We're the only yeah. football club where football is not even, it's not even thought about, it's not spoken about. There are no... Ben, it... ben would you agree we've become surrender monkeys? Worse than that. Now we don't even care. Yeah, uh, we can't it's... swear yeah. on, on, on the... <laughs> yeah. We have become, from the top... It has See, become failure is okay as long as you're making money. Yeah. In the, in the, this is not. I don't want to go on like an Enoch thing. This is about Bill Nick's tribute yeah, I, yeah. I, and that. I, I don't want to go on that. That's for another show. That's my, that's my this bad. is a, this is about Bill Nick and the greatness of why he was the greatest manager of our club. Um, he, he wouldn't have allowed that. Yeah, made, that's the point I was going to make. How how do you think he would have? Yeah, how do you think he would have dealt with these owners today? He would have left. He would have walked mm. and said, the football club is made to win football matches. Mm. And as soon as we get into a comfortable position, we take our foot off the gas. And that is the problem with this football club. Mm -hmm. we're, never, we're not daring to try it, daring to risk and daring to dream. We're not daring to do anymore. To dare is too dear. Mm. And he would not have accepted that and he would have walked. No. And, and I'd, Super Tottenham here, since Keith Berkshaw left Spurs in 84, we've gone on to win three trophies since. Says yeah. a lot, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Shall we dig into the statistics of Bill Nick? And then, right. So, um, Bill Nick was Bill Nickerson OBE. He was born on the 26th of January 1919, and he sadly passed away in 2004. He was a Yorkshire man, wasn't he, Arthur, from Scarborough around that era? Scarborough. Yeah. Um, he played for his youth career, played for the um, Young Liberals, 
and then he played for Scarborough. Scarborough yeah. working man's club. Yeah. Um, was there a lot of them working man's clubs back in them days, Arthur, in the 60s and sort of around Bill Nix? Yeah, they were working man's clubs um, um, in North London, mm. that, that, that I recall. Um, boxing clubs as well. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. But, yeah, life was different. Life was mm. tougher, hard, and you only, you only went up the ladder in life. I suppose, if you were prepared to really roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. And not yeah. feel sorry for yourself, you know. If you was a man, you were a man's man. Mm. Whereas today, um, in comparison, they're so looked after now. Um, they're, they're babied, you know. If they get a cold, they're off for about three weeks. But don't forget, as Steve touched upon when he was talking earlier, a lot of these guys went through the war as well. Yeah. That's, that's serious shit for tattooing you up. As Kim said, you know, a lot of these guys, as Steve pointed out, went through the war. Mm. And that, that, that's obviously a tough situation to go through. So these, these guys were hard nuts, you know. Mm. He, he, this is about his um, youth career, and I've just actually found this. Um, he, he was born in Scarborough, North Reading of Yorkshire. Um, he was eight of nine children. So it was a big family he came from. Um, Nicholson was a pupil at town's Gladstone Road Junior School before attending Scarborough High School for Boys. He worked briefly in laundry before he became a footballer. So I never knew that. Um, after leaving school, but at the age of 17, he was invited to a trial at Tottenham Hotspur where he, where he arrived on the 16th of March, 1936, after playing for Young Liberals and Scarborough's men's club in his youth. After a month's trial, he was taken on as a ground staff boy at £2 a week. <laughs> so he was rich. <laughs> he, yeah. He he played for um, Spurs North um, Nursery Club, North, North Fleet um, United, which is here. Um, that's where he went next. Um, and then where he won the Kent Senior Cup winners medal in his final in the final against Dover, and he signed full professional at Tottenham in August 1938, and he played his first game for Tottenham, um, first league game at Ewood Park against Blackborough Rovers on the 27th of October 1938. Um, he then went on to make, well, as you can see in the screen, 314 appearances and scored six goals. Um, his honours as a player, um, he won the he won the 1949-50 second division championship, and then of course he went on to win the the 50-51 first division championship, and then the charity shield. Ben, when when you look at his early career and the way football was played then, um, do do you think? And because he went through the war, he was in the army. He, he he was brought in as a PE instructor for all the new recruits that actually came into the army um, to train them. Do you think he learned everything he needs to know when he then for him to become a manager later on in his career at Tottenham? I think he taught some of those boys how to win a war as well. So that shows how mm. good a character. He came from Yorkshire. And in those days, Yorkshire was not a, a nice place to be. Mm. We see Yorkshire as this beautiful part of the world and lovely trees and forests, and that is harsh to live there. It's a hard mm. place to be. You're working down mines. You're working in factories. You're working in canning plants. You're working. You're doing hard manual labour. Mm. So I'd like to think that Bill Nicholson taught those army boys what it meant to be mm. someone part a free uh, part of a fighter. And he brought that. So not only did he probably teach them, they taught him something. So when he became Tottenham Hotspur player uh, and eventually manager, he was a leader of men and people mm. respected him. He knew how to command respect of, a, um, of, of soldiers that are laying their lives down. And that it can only be that Bill Nicholson was that great of a man. That's how he can command respect. Because yeah. everything he meant... He said, and he said what he meant. Yeah. Um, did you, did you, well, did you, or did your father see Bill Nick um, playing like you had likes of Alf Ramsey in that 
50-50 one side. Um, were you brought up on them stories as a kid of watching the great Bill Nick and that push a run side, Arthur, as, as a young kid growing up? Well, my father, unfortunately, died when I was nine years of age. Oh, so, sorry. Um, no, it's all right. He stepped off the curb one night in foggy old London, couldn't see a hand in front of your face, and a push bike came out of the fog. The handlebar struck him where his lungs are. Within three months, he was dead. And, yeah, he was um, an ex-regimental sergeant major in the Army. 54-inch mm. chest. He was a big, broad, fit guy. and uh, But he was an absolute Spurs man through and through. Mm. He knew Bill Nickerson because he used to run um, um, a, a decorating business, builder's uh, business, and met Bill Nick and used to go have a pint now and again with him, you know. So these were men. These weren't kids. These yeah. weren't men. And what I'm, I know I keep saying men, but you look at today's players in comparison, they, they, they couldn't hold a candle to the, to, to the guys back then. You know, they were just tough. They were hard. They'd been through mm. war. Um, and as you say, Bill Nick had uh, 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 turned into the PE trainer as well and was over to command respect. And that, was, that also was how he implanted his DNA into Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Yeah. Because they called him Mr Tottenham and there's a reason for that. Mm. You know, it's what we were. At the moment, we're a sad indictment of what we were. We need to, we need to look at ourselves and get back to what we were. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Arthur. Um, ben, um, he, he, he was a centre-half for a couple of seasons and then he went. He, he played the rest of his career as, as um, a right half. I think, Arthur, is that like a right, like right centre-back, isn't it? Am I right to say that? Yeah. With, with the players they had then, Ben, with like um, Arthur Rowe bought this push-and-run Thing in, I thought I said the story before how he taught it. He told the Tottenham player, hit he had they were in the car park. He said, Right, hit that ball against the wall, and then you move to where the ball goes. That's how simple push and one was. Do you think managers today should look back at their managers of the 50s and 60s? You had like Arthur Rowe, Bill Nick, so Matt Bosby, um, Billy, Bill Shankly. And then you had like Bob Paisley, Keith Birkinshaw. Should managers look back to football when it was simple? Yeah. And try to and try to take something from that into today's game. I, I go I I'll start with you, Arthur, and then I go to you, Ben. Yeah. Do, so, do you think they should do that, Arthur? Yes, I do. And the reason I say that is because football basically is a simple game. You get mm. the ball and you stick that leather thing in the onion bag. That's what it's about, right? How you do it is the secret of the game, isn't it? Mm. I mean, one team plays one way, another team plays another. But the game really is simple, really. It's it's become over-technified now. You know, people make it difficult. It's not difficult. Look what I've done to the offside rules. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're fiddling around with the offside rules and stuff like this. You know, football, football is... Still, to me, the beautiful game, but they're ruining it. Everybody, it's not just Spurs. Everybody, you know, it, they're all, they're making it too technical when it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It's a simple game. You get the ball, you take it forward, and you score. Really, yeah. That's really what it's about. Okay, I'll make it I'll make it very simple. But today, it's oh no, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. It's ridiculous. Mm. The simpler the game is, the more direct the football. The more direct the football, the more goals. Yeah. Um, ben, as a younger fan, when you look back at these old pictures of the Super Spurs of the 60s and the 70s, how do you feel watching back to them days under the great Bill Nick to watching the like Conte now managing the team? Do, do you feel that you feel, do you feel let down? Of, of what the side used to play like to how they play now? Well, it's the, the problem with football is, uh, again, <coughs> Perryman said and Arthur has said, mm. these players are pampered. 
they they don't know what it means to be a footballer anymore. Mm. They, they they don't the, the footballers back then saw it as a job, but they they loved it. They mm. did it. They loved it. A lot of these footballers now see football as a stepping stone to becoming a celebrity, yeah. and that's the problem with players such as Delhi and um, Paul Pogba for the most part, mm. and all these uh, Pierre Americ Bamiang, uh, um, a, a couple, there's so many of them. Even players like Lamella mm. and um, uh, and Reggion and all all these players, a load of the English players, they they as well. They all see football as a, as stardom. They don't see it mm. as being a footballer. They don't love football. They love themselves more than they mm. love the game. So now football is so separated from the fan, the fan in the street, the person that's working, what is it, ni- a nine to five job, or Lingard, true blue, uh, in um, the chat. They're so separated from the club and their fans. Mm. They've lost track of where they're going. So how how is someone like, um, uh, for example, I'm just going to give like Harry Kane earning 200 grand. How is he going to know what someone earning a nine to five, doing a nine to five, nine to five earning eight pound fifty an hour? They don't, because mm. they've never lived that life. They don't know what it's like to when it when you're having a really bad day, when you need to roll your sleeves up, and then whilst you're struggling, you have to pull something out of the uh, of the the rabbit in the hat and they've mm-hmm. got to make your family happy. They, they, they've, they've got one thing. They're not, they're not almost not people anymore. They're almost robots mm. for the most part. They are human beings and they do understand what it's like, but it's, they're so separated from society that it's not healthy mm. anymore. That's right. right. And they're it not, is. they're not teaching a new generation of how to act, mm. but all these silly social media posts and, you wouldn't catch Steve Perryman on TikTok uh, no, whilst you... in a plane. I think if Bill Nick caught anyone on TikTok nowadays, I think he would have got the phone and chucked it out the window, personally, <laughs> himself. But... And, that's, yeah. and that's the way it should be. Yeah. In my, in my business mm-hmm. of uh, working uh, as a barista, or not my business now because it's a completely different business, you wouldn't, see, you, wouldn't see, you shouldn't be seeing people using their phone while they're on a shift. No. Get off your phone. You've got, you've got to make 400 cups of coffee get back mm. to work or if you're in a canning factory get back to work don't make that, sh- social media posts yeah that was bill nick sort of attitude wasn't it yeah um yeah so he he was very successful as a player he won the second division championship a first league title as a club and then he won the first division championship then in 50 51 under the great arthur Rowe with the push and run side and then the charity shield then the one, I think the one it was shared, I can't just remember. Sorry, I do apologize. Then on the 11th of October 1958, the great Bill Nixon became Spurs manager from 1958 until 1974, and this is when the glory run started for Tottenham. Um, his first game as Tottenham Hotspur manager on the 11th of October 58 was against Everton, yes. The score line, that is true. That actually was the score line. <laughs> they actually beat them 10-4. But that score line, I think, Arthur, if I'm right in saying, was eclipsed the following season against Crew, Crew, um, Crew Alexander, 13-2. Yeah. That's it. We slaughtered them. Yeah. I think, what was that? Next year or was that the next year or the year after? I think it was the year after. I yeah. Be, I mean... Yeah, you know, he's trying to remember. I, I, I think it was the year before the double, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, oh, fifty nine sixty. Yeah, and then, well, folks, just you better sit down for what I'm going to put up next because this was his honours as a manager. Um, first division champion sixty one, FA Cup winner sixty one, the double, FA Cup nineteen sixty two. Now, can I just say they were the first team in the 20th century to do the double. Um, I think they were the first team in the 20th century, I think, to retain the FA Cup, or if not, in a very long time. Um, They were the first English side to win a European trophy in the Cup Winners' Cup, which a match we have shown on this channel before, in 63. Again, under the captaincy of the great Dave Mackay in 67, won the FA Cup. Um, and then um, the League Cup, I think Martin Peters then was captain for the League Cup win of 71, 
the UEFA Cup 72. I think the first English side to win two European trophies from as an English side. And then his final trophy was the League Cup winning 73. Um, I'll go first with you, Ben, because Arthur, I'm going to love listening to you to go through all this. Um, ben, you look at that, I mean, you can really see why he's the greatest manager Tottenham has ever had, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's just like, not only, we, it's putting together the pieces. Not only was he, mm. he a great person as a human being, he was a gr- he was a winner. Mm. So he proved you didn't have to win with cheating, game management, falling over, kicking players, hurting players, disrespecting the referee, disrespecting the other team, disrespecting this. They did it. Not only did they do it, they mm. did it with a flourish. They did it by everyone loved them. Every, this is why I taught them were for many many years. Everyone's second team was because of Bill Nick, because they mm. did everything. They, not only were they winners, they were winners doing the right thing. And that all came from Bill Nicholson. And we don't do that anymore. Not only do we not win, we also don't do it the right way. So Bill no. Nicholson was, he won everything, but doing it the right way. Respect, honour, uh, decency. Yeah. I mean, you work. look at that there, Ben. I mean, two trophies in 61. 62, another trophy. 63, another trophy. 67, another trophy. 71, 72, 73, a trophy every season. Yeah. I mean, in that 10, in that sort of uh, 10, 12 year period, we were unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And even the year we didn't win a trophy, we we're in the top two or the top three of the league. Arthur, you're a fan through all of this to this 12 year period of us winning it. Everything, Lucky yeah, that's what I was <laughs> gonna say. <laughs> Firstly, I've got two questions. Um, the first question to you, Arthur, is what was it like to live through that period of that 12 year period? I mean, I'll give my eye teeth to live through your period as a Spurs fan. What was it like? I can wax lyrical over this, it was phenomenal, it was unbelievable, really. Um, because this is when we became known as Super Spurs. And we were primarily a cup team. If we were in a cup, other teams would be trembling in their boots. You know, they said, oh, we've got like, you know, we've got the mighty Spurs. And we we would expect, we would expect to get to the final. And if we got to the final, we would expect to win the cup. Um, How time changes. Eh? We were that good. Mm. We were that good. And so it almost brings me to tears now when I think I, – I was on a show and somebody said, do you realise, he said, I've just worked it out, there's only three cups you haven't seen us win. You've seen all the other cups. And I have. You know, it, it's incredible. It was just an era, that 12-year period. I'll, I'll give you a quick story which might bring a smile to your face. I was sitting there watching us when we played Leicester in the FA Cup. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> I was sitting there, and my mum, bless us, she was just like my wife, you know, have your dinner on your lap in front of the TV dinner, and there's your sweet afterwards. And I always remember it was plain and syrup with custard. And we scored. And I went, yeah! This thing <laughs> went up in the air, flipped, came down straight into my nether regions, and burnt me. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It was phenomenal. So, <laughs> but it, it's what you did because it was the mighty Spurs, you know. Super yeah. Spurs. Um, yeah, there were times, and I, and I, and I, I really mean this, you guys are, are my friends as well. And I'd like to say, I wish I could take you back so you could see what I did. Through my eyes, incredible, incredible. Yeah, uh, it, it it really was. I mean, it really was. Um, I, this is going to be a hard question for you. I'll ask Ben. I'll give you time to think about it. It's the same question I'm going to ask Ben. I'm going to ask you after. So I'll give you go to Ben. Give you time to think about it. Out of all them trophies we won in that twelve year period, Ben and then Arthur, which one would you take now? 
Oh. If you could take any of them trophies, you're allowed to pick one for us to win next season. What would you pick? Well, we're still in it for this season. I'd like us to win the FA Cup. Oh, so would I. Yeah. You know, the, as it was then, the trophy. Mm. Um, you know, people have tried to minimise the impact of the FA Cup. But it's still a big trophy. Yeah. And I'd love us to bring another FA Cup in. I really would. Yeah. Now, yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Ben? It has to be the league title for me. I mean, we've always dreamed of getting to the top of the mountain in a football sense. And I would love to see us uh, be to say to my little nephew, most importantly, he's, he's probably, I don't know if he'll ever like football. Hopefully, he will one day. That is the best team in the country, and people aspire to be us yes. because of the way we act. And we, we we have lived off a failure for too long now of being the fourth best. We like to be in the top four, or as I call it, third loser. <laughs> I want to see us at the top of the mountain. So I would love to see us win the the title, the, the league title. Personally, that's for me. But one thing about the FA Cup is if we did somehow win it, that would be the proof of Tottenham Hotspur are back. That was the first yeah. thing that we did when we came up from relegation in the 80s. We won the FA Cup and then we went on a run in the 80s. Tottenham Hotspur are back because we are back holding the FA Cup, which was our trophy and it needs to be our trophy again. So I personally would love to see us win the league title, but emotionally it has to be the FA Cup. Yeah. But, uh, to say Tottenham Hotspur are physically back. And we, are, and we mean business. And I'm just going to be greedy, and I'm just going to say all of it, apart from the Cup Winners Cup, which actually doesn't I'll, exist anymore. Yeah, I feel I'll give, I need to give you a reason why I said the FA yeah. Cup. It's because we're still in it, and we certainly won't win the yeah. league. Yeah. Mr. Daigle. Good evening. Uh -huh. Good evening, sir. Um, Good evening. Shabbat shalom, Ben Achi, and uh, hello, Daigle. Hi, Ben. Hi, Brian. Nice to have you on. Brian, um... We had the great Stevie P tonight. I and um, it, it was just an honor speaking to him. I'll ask you the same question as I asked the lads. Um, Bill Nick won them trophies in the 12 year period. If you could pick one, I know the Cup Winners Cup's not around anymore, and you right, we can call that the Conference League, all right? Just out of just bring back the Cup Winners Cup. Yeah. If you could pick one trophy to win next season out of that 12 year period, what would you pick? Well, the first division championship. I, I guess we're we're calling that the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Premier League. Yeah. And it means we've got to get relegated and then win the. Uh... Oh, there's the Kim. Why am I looking over there to try and find you, Kim? But how are you, darling? I've done everywhere. I was going to ask Kim as well. I, I hope you're thinking, Kim, because I'm coming to you next with the same question. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, look, listen, right. none of us are going to complain at either a Premier League title or no. an FA Cup, are we? None of us. No. Um, that, that, that would be a near orgasmic experience for any mm. Spurs fan. But yeah. it just feels a million miles off at the moment. We, we need to really churn that squad before we're anywhere near it, I, I think. <laughs> um, question to you, Ben, um, Brian. I've asked them, Brian, Ben and, and Arthur. What does Bill Nick mean to you as a Spurs fan? Um, he's the foundation of everything. He is... <clears throat> you look at Sir Matt Bosby at Manchester United. You look mm -hmm. at Bill Shank Shankly at Liverpool. You look at Don Revy at Leeds. You look at Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest. Well, this man is our version of that. Um, he is... We all say um, Martin Yo is the catalyst for what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And he is, like, the return of what we were doing and where we were going. But this man is what invented... This man invented the wheel at Tottenham Hotspur. Pure and simple. Um, yeah. The respect that this man demanded and commanded, the... Uh, Listen, when, when someone has their debut as a manager 
and beats Everton 10-4, 10-4 on your debut, you're 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 in the you're in the uh, the midst of greatness. Um, you're, this guy, like we still hear famous clips from his interviews and speeches. This man drank, slept, ate everything Tottenham Hotspur, everything. Um, he set the morals. He set the guidelines. He set the he set the ethics. He set that everything is him. There is no Tottenham without Sir Bill Nick. End of. No. There the really isn't. There the really isn't, Brian. Um, right, he made one England cap. He had one England cap. It's the same as Steve Perriman. I don't know if Arthur can remember this or not, but he actually scored after 19 seconds. I mean, that's just... When I read that stuff earlier, I nearly fell off my chair. <laughs> after 19 seconds, he scored his one and only England goal against Portugal. Um, do you remember that, Bright, uh, Arthur, or... Me, definitely not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, fair enough. I can I've barely just... remember what I did yesterday. I've just dug a big hole and walked straight into it. That's what I've just done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember, obviously, I really remember Bill Nick from his days at Spurs, mm. not international uh, yeah. games, you know. But um, as I said, I'm still sad that he never got more caps. Yeah. Because uh, he certainly deserved them. Mm. And uh, when you think his opposite number on the other side... Was uh, Sir Alf Ramsey? Says it all, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it um, really does. Um, and, and the other thing is, I just want to say that he did. He he obeyed the basics of football. You build from the back. You build your defence, then your midfield, then your forward line. And that's exactly what Bill Nicholson did. And look what he got us, you know. Mm. Phenomenal teams. He, he really did. Brian, um, he left the club in 74 after, uh, as Steve said, that it was all getting to him a bit at the time. Yep. Keith Birkenshaw brought him back in 76. And then I, I couldn't believe this that either. He was club consultant from 1976 to 1991. Does that not surprise you with Bill, with Bill Nick's finger somewhere in Tottenham why we were still so successful even in the 80s up to the 91 Cup final? Well, the only thing I've got to say about that is uh, that's what happens when you bring football people into on a football uh, a football uh, a team. And now there's no one better. There's no one better to, to bring back back in those days than what I just said he represents and what he meant, and I'm sure Arthur, Ben, and yourself have very, very similar things that this man is, Mr. Tottenham. Um, mm. And that's what happens. And that's not me taking a swipe at the, the where, where we currently are. It's just a look what Ajax do with Van der Sarre over Masters left. When football people are there to do the footballing aspects, you've got to remember the respect that people had for Bill Nick as well. When you're dealing with Bill Nick, you're like, okay, I'm dealing with a legend here. I'm dealing with a man of principles. I'm dealing with a man of... And this is what happens when you have football men that know what they're doing and have years and years of experience and knowing how the game works and how to deal with things and how to approach things. Then things get done. Things get done. And like we said at the moment, the Conte effect for trying to get players in or the Mourinho effect or or Pete, the youngsters wanted to come and play for Poch, Bill Nicholson was like, you know, like when you have uh, gatekeepers, like if people want to speak to Alan Sugar or Bill mm. Gates or whatever, they've got mm. to get through loads of people to get to that guy. Well, Bill Nick was that gate owner. Bill, 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 Bill Gates, Bill Nicholson would open doors. And people go, wow, that's the great Bill Nick. I want to speak to that man. I want to hear what that man's got to say. This man... Look what he's done. Look what he represents. Look what he's achieved. Look what he wants to talk to me. Oh, and that's what he did. And not just him. That's what football men, especially back in that day and, and going forward like with great players. Please, God, we have people like 
I'm just going to say these. And hopefully, Ledley King in his role will grow on to become of that kind of caliber, not just an ambassador, a more involved part of the football team and the setup. Um, you look at people that could come back. I'd love to see Jan Vertonghen back uh, in some kind of capacity. To, to mm. but that's uh, and these are just me picking random players. You 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 look at Rafa van der Vaart. You need players like this to be within the to know the footballing world to make these transitions easier, and that's what Bill Nick did. He he really did, and and Ben, um, do you know he then became club president in 1991, um, and then that's sort of when his influence in the club sort of finished. But this final quote, um. I did have his stats up for how many games he as manager, and I forgot to put it on, and I, I forgot where I've left it, but I will, in the next stream, I will bring it up. Um, he he got his OBE in 1975. And this is the bit that gets me. And I'll start with you, Ben, then I'll go to you, Arthur, and then you, Brian. White Hart Lane, the, the road, I think it was by the corner pin then, um, by the gates, Bill Nick's gates. Yeah. Um, was called Bill Nickerson Way in 1999. No, that was, um, um, oh, not the corner pin, the, uh, the White Hart. Park. Rudolph. It was Rudolph's. Rudolph's, that's it. Yeah, sorry. I was getting mixed up with my thing. The where the gates Park. were anyway, where the Bill Neal gates were to the, the West End. Um, yeah. Bill, that called Bill Nickerson Way. I mean, for God's sake, this man, was, you look what he's won, what he's done for the club. Surely, Ben, we should do more for the man's memory than what we've done. It's it, pathetic. It, it is pathetic. Uh, what should we do as a club to remember? I mean, you look at Manchester United, they have Matt Bosby. You look at Leeds, they have Don Revy. You look at uh, Manchester United, they've got the Sir, Sir Alex Ferguson stand. You look at Nottingham Forest, the Brian Clough stand. Surely, we sh they remember their managers. We do nothing for our greatest manager that ever lived. What would you do? What do you want to see the club do? Well, to start with, uh, they need to name that Park Lane, the Bill Nicholson stand, first and foremost. It could still be known as Bill Nicholson's Park Lane, or Bill, uh, Bill Nicholson should have a, a portrait of himself in that stand so that people can show their respect to the great man, even if it's not a statue, because I can understand why some people might not want a statue, but that stand is the antithesis of everything Tottenham, and so was Bill Nick. So that stand, there should be as many pictures of Bill Nick in that stadium as there are silly things to make money. That, yeah. that's what he meant. There is not, barely any pictures of Bill Nick in that stadium, and the ones you can see are usually got a band in front of them mm. playing crap music. There should be... Every single year, we should have a day to remember Bill Nick as well as yeah. a Stanley night. We should remember that man because that man was Tottenham. He still is Tottenham. Even mm. after he's, he died in 2004, he's still Tottenham. There's nothing more. To, if you could rename Tottenham to anything, you could call it Bill Nicholson. Mm. It's almost the same as rock and roll with Chuck Berry. If you can rename it, there's only one thing. Bill Nicholson. Yeah. He built that club. And there, there is not enough to remember him. Yeah. Arthur, you, you were lucky enough to see the great man in, in his management prime um, in the 60s and 70s. What do you, what should the club do for you? You're a fan that's seen it all. Well, what would you love to see the club do for Bill Nick? And I think the club should actually talk to fans like you that have seen Bill Nick. That have that have been around in that time, that have supported Tottenham for all their lives. What do you want to see Tottenham do to remember the great Bill Nicholson? Long time fans like myself, we are part of the fabric. We're part of the Spurs history. Mm -hmm. We've been there. We've seen it. You know, all right, we didn't do it on the pitch. But we were there in the stands for them. And Brian, <laughs> Brian will know where I'm going to come from here. I'm going to apologise. It's piss poor that we don't have a statue of Bill Nick and it's piss poor he was never knighted for being the first manager mm -hmm. to win a European trophy. I think mm -hmm. the first English manager to do the double. Uh, first, in, first English manager top to do flight. the double, yeah, top flight. Um, 
it's also piss poor that we haven't got one of Jimmy Greaves alongside him. Mm. Two of the most influential people at that club during the 60s, 50s, 60s um, and 70s. Um, Let's face it, they give us sod all to be grateful about in the modern age. They mm. can at least look backwards a little bit and kind of celebrate our past, couldn't they? Yeah. They did well to dig back into the past, as we said earlier, and take a cue from the from these managers for today. And you to know, see your history, follow us on Tottenham Towns from Gold every morning at half past 11. Plug for the show. We, we won't let it die in this channel, and that's my lifetime's ambition to the day I die to remind everyone of what this club is, what it was about, and what it should be about. And it's me and Ben's mission to keep it going, and we will keep it going. <laughs> Arthur, it's for people like you that I have the utmost respect for. I really do. Us younger fans, you're the ones that laid the foundation with Bill Nick. You helped lay for generations of fans after you that have come. You've laid the foundations, and we're all grateful for you. So thank you, Arthur, for everything you've done for, for us fans in this club, because right. we'd be nowhere without fans like you. And I'm... I'm, I'm... Just chuff that everybody appreciates it. And I'm in your company. Yeah, well, it's our honour. Brian? Yeah, I mean... I'm, I mean trying, I'm, try, I'm trying not to go down the Levy out route. I'm really trying no, not no, no, to go no, down no, that no, route. I'm not going to go down the Levy out. I, I'm just enjoying watching Kim's floating finger like a fly. I yeah, noticed I mean, that. I could see that away. what she was doing. Um, <laughs> I could just be off and go away, go away, go away, leave me alone. Um, um, but yeah, so, you know what I want to you, Brian? Bill Nick, what should we do? Well, do you know what I would have done? And the very first thing I would have done is whilst we're waiting for naming rights, like uh, uh, Ben said, but I would have called that the Bill Nick Arena or the Bill yeah. Nick. Until it gets naming rights, that stadium, I I hate the Tottenham Hotspur Arena. Yeah. I hate it. So you call that the Neil Bickelson. The, the Bill, road is gone. Why? The road is gone. Where, where, where his road was, there is no road. So whilst we're waiting for naming rights... Why don't you give something back to the fans for the identity yeah. and call it the Bill Nick Stadium or the B Bill Nick Arena, whatever you want to, Bill Nicholson, whatever, um, to honour the great man until the naming rights came. Um, we had this discussion when we had Sean on his show about the statue. Yeah. Um, I think it's an outrage that there isn't a statue of him. If there had to be one person, it's him. Yeah. If there's a second, it's Jimmy Greaves. Mm -hmm. um, and they say, uh, as it was brought up, that Jewish people don't bow to idols or, or bow to statues. And I'm like, well, why are you at every Saturday home game? Why is there no kosher food in the, uh, uh, in the, in the stadium? Mm -hmm. So he, we, we can't use that route. Um, I think the... Um, I think the stadium should have been called... The Bill Nick Stadium. Yeah. There has to be something. We have that bust because it was there before um, Levy got there. We have to honour. We have to honour our past. Mm. I, I we think we should. Do, I think we should start a petition for that. You know, Brian. I actually feel very strongly on that. Well, well, I, you, you, you're trying to drive me down that road, and I'll. I'll, I'll I'm not sure trying I'm to sure. drive you down that road. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I, I try and stay I, clear. And say, the only thing I'll say on that is. Um, I could, yeah, the petition. I don't think it will do a damn thing. As much no. as we'd get the, uh, as much as we'd get the 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 fans will play their part, mm. but I don't think it, anything would come of it. Yeah, I, I know what you're getting, it. and I wasn't trying to take it down that road, Brian. I was just trying just to, because we should do more. Um, can I also say big up to Kuva. Um, he's a massive part of this channel as well as Phil, and. Do you know, and um, Coover remembers the shelf, standing the shelf as a as a as a youngster as well. He's told me stories that make me tears run down my face for stories for him. So big up Coover and big up for everything you do as well, sir. <laughs> um, I, I like the bit he also says this. Where is it? I've got to bring it up. Uh, I forget where it is now. Well, we've, apparently you're stalking each other again. Apparently, Coover says. Yeah. Yep, uh, I was just on a stream with Cooper on Spurs related, and we yeah. are we're about to stalk each other. What can I say? We can't keep away from each other. No, um, I'm going to bring up some pictures. I can 
split shared the screen. So I'm going to cover people's faces, but these are off Bill Nick during his lifetime at Tottenham Hotspur. So um, I'm sorry to everyone, their faces are going to be covered, but this is the only way I, I can do it. Um, the first one here is off the 51 team. Um, you can see Bill Nick there and, and Alf Ramsey somewhere there. Um, and Arthur Rowe. This is Bill Nick uh, in 72 with the UEFA Cup. Yeah. Um, you can see how happy he looks there. He looks really chuffed. <laughs> uh, um, there's Bill Nick then with the 63, with the 63 Cup Winners Cup. Um, this is another one of Bill Nick in his playing days. I'm 51. Um, this is uh, Bill Nick leading out the 67 Cup Winners, Cup FA Cup Winners. Yeah. Um, there's Bill Nick in his playing days. I mean, look at them shorts. I mean, <laughs> they're long. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is my favourite picture. It really what is. What is the goalkeeper doing? <laughs> I was waiting for that. Looks like he's levitating. What is he <laughs> doing? That's some, that's some exorcist or Blair Witch project shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 when I saw that picture, I said I have to bring it in because it looks absolutely so funny. It's like the goalkeeper's right. I'm just dancing into the net here. <laughs> I'm still not there if that was the East Stand or the West Stand, but w would you know, Arthur, if that was the West Stand or the East Stand? Uh, that was the... Hang on. Yeah, I West. think it's the East Stand because the West Stand was where the coaches are and there's definitely no coaches on the sidelines there. All right, so that was the... I would stand, think. Right? I would think. But, I mean, I mean, that stand looks brilliant. I would love to stood in that stand. I mean, that looks brilliant. Uh, uh, you know what, Aaron Dove is my brother. Oh, by the way, I've got your voice now, Aaron. I haven't listened to it. I've just had a lot going on. Yeah. But in that, if you go back to that shirt, if you go back to that, he's just asked, why is Jack Grealish playing in goal? <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely brilliant. He's a dead ringer for him, isn't he? That's brilliant, Aaron. Oh, Fred, that's well spotted, Aaron. I'll tell you one thing. Fair play to you, sir. Um, this is the 50 side. Um, you got Arthur Rowe there. You got that man in the middle named Forget Me Ted something. His his name Ted Forget. Ted. Yeah. Ted. Um, um, you got Alf Ramsey there. Um, Bill Nick. Uh, I think Ed Bailey was Eddie Bailey in that side, Arthur. Yes. Can't see him at the moment though. That's no. a proper trench coat as well. I love a trench coat. That's <laughs> a proper is. trench coat. Bring the trench coat. He's, he's a hitman for the mafia. <laughs> oh yeah, he is. Yeah, but what, it does look what, like what? Guy, Why is the goalkeeper wearing a turtleneck? <laughs> he always did, Ted Ditchburn. Oh, did he? Yeah, and he had a shop. Okay. He had a shop in Northumberland Park, grocery store. There we go. And you can see the badge there, the cockerel, very big cockerel badge. The badge, I mean, that badge is wicked. I'd bring that back for a year. I that would is... too, actually. Um, we've got Bill Nick here celebrating Hello, with the... Perryman. They're brilliant, look. I don't know if this is a 71 or 73 League Cup win inside. I, I, I'm not sure. I was 71. Is that Alan Gilzine in the bottom left, Arthur? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perryman next to him. Yep, you got Chivers behind Gilzine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Pat Jennings there somewhere. That's Martin Peters, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Um Can't you got the where's the you got the young Irish winger there. Where is he? Or did he come later? I think he might have come later. I'm just trying to make out Alan Mullery's in the middle. Yeah. And you've got, is that Phil Bill on, on the far right? I think you might be right, Arthur. Phil Bill. Yeah. And I think that's, is that Cyril Knowles next to Alan Mullery? That's Cyril Knowles. Uh, Mullery's got the cup on his head. Yeah. And the fella next, I can't think of his name. <sighs> Who's the fella next to Martin Peters? He was a winger. Was he that Scottish winger? What, John Duncan? Yeah, is that John Duncan next to Martin Peters? Hang on, Kim's got her arms across me at the moment. 
<laughs> so I'm trying to make it bigger, like the screen bigger. But... Let's have a quick look. No, I don't think that is Duncan, actually. No. You know what, Kaguma, I, I... God bless Kaguma. Um, how are you doing, honey? Uh, Aaron picked out something in the one, but Kaguma's just picked out the, the thing from this. How shiny is that cup? It really is. It's very shiny. <laughs> Someone's got the brass bow out. <laughs> i tell you one thing. We have the best people in our comments for picking out stuff. Absolutely. And it's we apologise. Yeah, we apologise for oh, not getting up. Sunshine. Maybe it's shiny oh. because of her in the chat. She's making oh, the cup. Yeah, Jimmy Neighbour. Is it Neighbour, is it? Jimmy Neighbour. Oh, when... right. That's who it was. I apologise to everyone. We haven't got everyone's comment up for this show. We do apologise. It's just that with Mr. Perriman on and everything, it's just gone he a bit mad. He to give us 20 minutes and then he gave us an entire hour. He did. Bless him. He didn't have to do that. No, he didn't. But, um, this is not Bill Nick. Well, it is. But Bill Nick, you couldn't bring up Danny Blanche fly out mm. in the build. You had to bring him up. Oh, yeah. D there's his skipper holding the FA Cup and a load of balls on his shoulder. <laughs> right, I'm going to training now. This picture for me, I actually got it for Brian. This one's for you, Brian. Because it just, I just saw that and I could see you as manager doing that. You and Arthur. I could just see you doing that. So I just that one's for you, Brian. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So that, look at them with all their, their, their suits there and everything. Yeah. Look at look at how the changing rooms have changed. Yeah. Look at that. It's just such a basic here's one peg for all your stuff on. Now they've got all the lockers, they've got Oh, uh, it's just ridiculous. For that Rolex. It makes me sick. Yeah. You see him there talking to the player what he did wrong, like Steve Perriman says, this is what you did wrong. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, they would have won 7-0, and he would still just said, you did yeah. this wrong tonight, mate. I, there is a, I, I will, before we end, I've got to get Arthur to tell the story about how he got Jimmy Grease, but that's, the la that's at the end of the show, which is actually coming up soon. We are going to wrap up soon. But before we end, Arthur's got to tell the story how he got Jimmy Greaves because it's a brilliant story. Should we take the photo off so we can see him then? No, we'll do it at the end. I've got a few more photos to go and then we we'll get right. That one for me is my, the favourite picture. We've got Jimmy Greaves one side and the great Bill Nick in the other. Fantastic. Um, yeah. We've got that one there of Bill Nick holding the UEFA Cup. And I can pretend I'm winning with him. Yeah, that one for me. I love this picture of him and Glenn Hoddle. I mean, that's just it's oh, brilliant. Man. Yeah, Hoddle God. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the last one, and this is the most famous picture of ever. And I think it's this one standing outside. Yeah, that that should be made into the statue. They should remake that. Yes. Yeah, well, that is what that should be outside White Hart Lane. Yeah, that, it should be. that is what should be. That man welcoming everyone from all over the world to visit his club, the club he built, the house that he built. That should be outside White Hart Lane. That exactly when I ever right. when I go to heaven, Ben, I want that man. That's what I want that man to meet me at the pearly gates, Bill they, Nick. And they should have a plaque under that saying, "Mr. Tottenham." Yeah. What happened to them gates? I wonder. No, they saved them, um, I heard. I'm not sure what they've done with them, but they, they reckon they saved them. I it's think him pointing yeah. that they put them in your ear. Mm. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> she said, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you see, like? And big up Bob Sparrow as well. I had that honour as well today of meeting Arthur and Ken, and it was absolutely wonderful. Of course you did. Well, I, I, I always say I had the honour of meeting Brian two weeks ago, and I'll tell you one thing, it's the highlight of my year. It really oh, was mate. the highlight of my year. It mate, really mate, was. Mate. It really was. Go on, Arthur. Let's hear the story how Bill Nick got Jimmy Greaves, because this is absolute classic. It really is, and it's the way to end the stream on of this Bill Nickerson special. So that go on, Arthur. That was at London Airport, and... Uh... In walked, in walked Jimmy Greaves. So Bill's in there. Jimmy Greaves um, came in. And uh, it was, oh, 
Morning, uh, uh, Bill. Oh, hello, Jimmy. And then he, sa he said, uh, are you flying out then, Jimmy? He said, yeah, I'm supposed to be flying back to Milan today. Um, and he said, oh, he said, you, you, you don't sound too happy about it. Now I want to come back and play in England. Oh, you fancy playing for Spurs, Jim? Oh, he said, uh, yes, please. I'd love to do that, Bill. That's how the deal was made. But Jimmy Greaves thought he was going to be the first £100,000 player. And Bill paid £99,999, 19 shillings and 11 pence. A penny short. <laughs> That's the story of how Jimmy Greaves came came to Spurs. I, I still laugh at that. I still laugh at that every time. Well, listen, I want to thank everyone who's been in the comments. Everyone that's been, I mean, there's 30 people still watching. Look, please get them likes and subscribes in. We're trying to get to 400 before the end of February. But this show wouldn't be nothing without you, the people that watch it and put your comments in. It wouldn't be the show wouldn't be nothing without my co-host Ben Brian, who comes on supports the channel, also for Garth King Arthur and the lovely Kim B for coming on and Grace. Do you know Grace us with their presence because this show would be nothing without them. Also, I want to thank everyone in the chat: uh, Ellie, Aaron Dub, Super Tottenham, most especially Bob Spur. Big up. And this show, Bob, is dedicated to you. For your for you to get better, sir. This show is in honor of you. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got Guguma, too many people to mention, and I just want to say That's thank you so that. so much for watching this, for doing what supporting and this. There tonight. it is, Derbert. Piss off, oh, Derbert. I've got it. I've Piss made it. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> I've made it. Now that's it. I've made. If I don't do another stream, I'm happy. I've made it. <laughs> um, but most of all, I want to thank Mr. Steve Perriman for giving up his time tonight. He was supposed only to give 20 minutes, but he gave an hour. So that shows the quality of the man. Um, I'll start with you, Brian. Thank you for coming on. Um, mm -hmm. Where can people find you, sir? <laughs> and finally, also, where can people find you? But finally, what's your thoughts on the great Bill Nick? So I mean, well, I, I, I'll start. I'll, I'll start talking about the legend that is Bill Nick. Obviously, he means it's because of him and everything he set up that we're all here doing this. Mm. Uh, we are to, all of the. I mean, obviously, Arsenal fan TV started, but the whole thing, everything we do, we did a lot of great things before him. Hopefully, we will do a mm -hmm. lot of great things after him. But people will say for generations the greatest manager to ever manage Tottenham. Like Harry Kane. Harry Kane could take over Jimmy Greaves and go down as greatest Tottenham's greatest manager, uh, striker and goal scorer. But people, a manager will have to come in and have to be absolutely iconic to ever emulate what that man's done. That man, please God, I have kids. My grandkids mm. will be telling their grandkids about Bill Nicholson. Yes, there's Arthur Rowe and the other, but Bill Nick will be, will be the one uh, that always stands out. Always. Um, where it comes from, where they can find me. Listen, I'm going to be very quick with this because I want to. They can find me there, Tottenham on tour. The main thing I want to talk about right now is I've gone on from one legend, and now I'm going to talk about a superstar. I'm going to talk about my best friend. I'm going to talk about my Superman, which is Bob Spur. And as we all know, he is coming back. I don't, I don't care if you subscribe to me. I don't care. Uh, I'd love you to. The most important thing is the legend is coming back to us. The superstar is coming back to us. My Superman is coming back to us, and he will be back on YouTube soon. And believe me, a lot of people, a lot of people have missed or not seen what, but I mean, obviously... As Kim will know, and as we all know, Bob, we've been very uh, open about Bosper updates, me, Kim, Tammy. Um, and literally, a lot of people have got to know who he is without seeing him or going back and watching his past dreams and then knowing who he is. The, the crown jewel in our uh, community is coming back. A lot of this YouTube family, yes, we are Tottenham TV, are the mothership. 
There's so many chats that Bob created. There's so many topics that Bob does on YouTube um, that no other people have. He does his show uh, in on the wall every Saturday at 10, I think it's 10.30 at night, UK time. And very, very soon, he, he'll be back and everyone's going to be here to, to support him and, and help him. So, so listen, all, all I'm going to say is, yes, you can find me at Tottenham on tour, but I urge everyone, before you even think about, if you haven't already subscribed to Tottenham on tour, go and subscribe to this channel because it will be the best decision you ever make because he is a legend. He is a superstar. He is my best friend. He is Superman. And that's where everyone needs to go. So this is all about getting Bob Spur back to where he should be and getting the numbers that he deserves. Yeah, I, I, I echo that completely. Um, I wouldn't be here. I always say, like, Dave Harris is the mothership for our channel, but Bob Spur, for me, gave me the confidence to do it. He was always there with advice when I used to Twitter him. He would always give me hints and what to do at the start and how to do things. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And my admiration, my he's inspired me for what he's gone through. I'm immensely um, just, I'm in his awe. That man is, a, as Brian said, he is Superman. And he is he is an inspiration. He reminds me of Rocky, because it's not hard. It's not as hard. You get hit is getting hit and keep moving forward. And Bob, for me, is is Rocky to me, because he keeps moving forward. And Bob, we all love you. We all miss you, and we can't wait to see you back. Because YouTube is a is going to be a bright place when you're back on our screens again. Um, and Ben Coover, do you want to say anything about Bob Spur? I mean, we, uh, yeah. I mean, on, the man on, below man. me, Mr. Brian, has um, has already said all you need to know, and Dermot's already said all you need to know. I have only been on one stream with Bob. It's not like I've known Bob personally, but what <clears throat> I have always said in the chat is never tell people what you think people should think of you. The way people think of you is the way people's colleagues and friends think of them, and there's nothing what anyone in this community says that says. That man is not an absolute legend of a bloke. Every single person you meet, from Brian to Coov to Dermot to Arthur to Kim to all the people in the community, say what a man this man is. And that is that is that is the proof comes with the pudding. And um, I've only ever been on one show with Bob, and he like was it great. He didn't look down at me as someone that had never been on a show before. And since then, we've gone from strength to strength. I wouldn't have done a stream three months ago. And the first stream I ever did was with Mr. Bob Spur. Me and Brian met later at that day. I don't know why Brian wanted to meet me, but it was quite funny, really. But he's, he's an absolute legend of a bloke. And when I do finally get to share a stream with him properly and it's a proper show, it's going to be an absolute pleasure. Uh, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be an unbelievable moment. And it's shown how the that my journey on this three month thing has come about. So I wasn't doing this three months ago. I was just sitting in my room doing nothing and twiddling my thumbs. And now suddenly I have a, a massive community of friends that all come into my coffee shop and I'm helping Danny Kiriakou do, do, do with his coffee machine. I'm, um, I had Kim and Arthur in my shop today. Uh, I speak with um, the lovely Shamu on the phone every other day, uh, whether it's Aaron Dub in the chat uh, talking about Japanese culture in my coffee shop on me but doing my own stream as partly because bob was there but <coughs> him treating me properly gave me the the confidence to do it myself and it's, it's not something i can really say anymore um hopefully i have portrayed it well but he's i can't wait to actually share a stream with the bloke yeah cool. I'll, I'll, I'll say about bob he is he's been so sorely missed over these last few months because when times start going bad with this club or within the community and people are at each other's throats, there was one man who was always the, the sensible, he was the calming influence. He's the man that listens to everything. Yeah, that's right, Brian. <laughs> Mr. Calm. <laughs> no, Bob is the one that will listen. He's got an integrity and a warmth and a charisma that you want to listen to him, and he listens to you when you're talking, mm -hmm. which is a rare thing. I generally... I've got a bad habit of talking over people. 
Bob will listen. He will take in every word, process it, calmly come back with a response. It's, he's a very good feel-good factor to this community. Mm. He's a calming influence, and he's the granddaddy of the, of the sort of happy feeling, happy vibes around this, this community. Always has been for me. Even when I wasn't joining in on streams, I would listen to Bob's channel. I'd like to have it on in the background. It was a calming thing. It's a nice bit of fun. He's got wicked sense of humour to go yeah. with it. So oh, it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's been really missed around these channels in the last few months. So it's really chuffed to have him back. I mean, for me, Bob, and I, I just thought of it when came in, we, we, Bob, Bob is a common influence on all of us. But Bob is like your best friend. When Bob speaks to you, you think he's the only one. Like, he makes you feel he's only talking to you. You could be in a room of a, a full of, full of, a, a, a room full of people, and Bob will come in. And he would speak to you, and you feel you're the only person in the world he's talking to. So, so, so you you know what you want to talk about Bob's personality, yeah, <laughs> and his sense of humour. Well, 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 there you go. And I'm I'm just going to echo. <laughs> I mean, I, I I need to echo this. Like 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 what you and Dermot, where you and Ben said, Dermot, you you came on because of Bob's birth, and he gave you the inspiration. Um, People know that I came back to London and why I came back to London. I met Bob through seeing him on We Are Tottenham, like I did with Ben. I saw Ben on We Are Tottenham TV and I said, Ben and Simon, I need to meet this dude. He's fi I fucking up. Well, Bob and I did a stream together and then the rest was history. Um, I've, I, I've got another be uh, mate, Jerry, that is my other best mate. I've known him for 14 years. No one gets on a parallel to him until this man entered the scene. I've known this guy about a year and a half. I was in England for seven weeks. I got back for three weeks. I was like, right, I'm coming back. He needs me. Um, that's the power this man has. And that's the love that he he receives from me and, and, and from everyone because I wouldn't do this for, for, for just anyone. This guy is very, very special. And you know what? Like we've been saying with Wally Skip to bring it back to Tottenham, you, you know how badly we miss him when he's gone and when he's not there in the squad. Well, this YouTube family has gone on and carried on throughout the weeks, but it's been missing a massive, massive player. Mm. A massive, massive player. And thankfully, through him kicking the arse out of all these things he's had to deal with and the help he's had from the NHS, he's coming back. So there's a big-time player coming back and like I said to, to echo it again anyone who hasn't subscribed please go and make one very good decision once this stream finishes hop over to Bob Spur TV I think there is a space between Bob Spur and TV and hit that subscribe button because it's my mission to get him to the subscribers Tottenham on tour have got because that man deserves everything and it's my mission to make sure he has it I think Absolutely. everyone will echo that. Everyone will echo that. Um, I think that's a good place to leave the show. Leave the I was, was going to say, I wasn't, I wasn't going to come onto the stream, you know. I was just no. going to talk to you behind yeah. the scenes. Uh, can I, oh, since I'm here, I've got to say something. I've got to say something for you, Derma, Ben, and King Arthur in particular. Well done tonight. Stream, stream brilliant. Uh, that I didn't want to come on very specifically because I didn't want to crowd the, the room out, the great Steve Perryman on. I wanted you to have your time with them. Dermot, you fully deserve to have these moments because you put in the work. You get the man on in the first place. You communicate with him. Ben's you've been your wingman all week. You two are holding the show together while the likes of Phil and I are off. And you could have no better guest than King Arthur for a Steve Perryman mm -hmm. show. So good job, good job, job the three of you, and I'm glad it went well. Thank you very much. And I, I wouldn't be, I couldn't do the show without you, Kuva, because you help in the background as well. You're there for advice, so thank you, Kuva and Phil as well, the pair of you. And Arthur, it's been an honour, sir. And you know, any time you want to come back, you're more than welcome. Many, many thanks, um, because thank you, Kuva. Not forget that, Benji. Oh no, Benji! I mean, I've already said it though. That's Uncle Brian. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell you one thing. I two years ago, I didn't know any of you. 
two years later, I have I've made the best friends ever in oh. this community, and I can't thank you all enough. Look, as the great man says, I'm actually going to bring him up. Um, I'm going to bring this picture up to end the stream. So sorry if Ben, you're going to be cut out, and sorry Brian as well. That's all right. I can see I can see Brian just poking Listen, his head. It, 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 if I'd be cut oh, out by anyone, yeah, let it be this man. I'll even yeah. wait a minute. I, for the, <laughs> there you go, I'll go into complete hiding. I, <laughs> I, I just want to say before we, we play out the thing, there's a song, one of my favorite songs was called My Way. And Bill Nick did it his way. Absolutely. Yeah. Good night. God bless. Come on, you Spurs. See you, Dermot. Come on, you Spurs. Cheers, guys. Big up.